this is the easiest and fastest way to become a new person in about three months. I'm not joking, this is about as long as this would take. But first, let's outline the problem. Do you feel stuck in life, man? Maybe you have like an idea of what your life could be. You've got an idea of what your potential is. Maybe you have this intuitive sense that you that life could be better. You could be living more deeply, more fully, more expansively. You could be living with more freedom. Maybe you also know what actions that you theoretically, if you just took these actions repeatedly, you would bring this life into existence. You're not an idiot, man. You know this, you know what would work. But there's some reason, some mysterious force in the background that stops you from making this happen, that stops you from consistently taking the actions. Maybe you have little periods where you actually take the actions and you start getting your shit together and you start really making it happen. You see a bit of progress, but then there's something, some weird gravitational pull in the background that just sort of pulls you right back in. And next thing you know, you're back watching Netflix, scrolling YouTube shorts and Instagram reels and all that other shit, right? I've been there, man. I promise you right now that I've been there. A bit, everything I just described, what, what, how do you think I know this? How do you think I was able to pinpoint it? Because I've been exactly in the same spot where you potentially are if you're watching this video. So there's one reason for this, man. Actually, there's a few reasons, but the main deepest reason that I want to tell you about today or that I'm talking about in today's video, I can sum it up in a single word. And what is that word? That word is identity. Your identity is that gravitational pull that keeps you stuck. Now, don't scroll off the video yet because I've not explained what's going on. Let me explain what's going on. When I say identity, when you think of yourself, when you th in your mind, you have an image of who you are. You have an image of yourself. This is your self-image. Your self-image is like a character in a movie. And like a character in a movie is largely defined by the kind of food you choose to eat, the kind of people you hang around with, the kind of actions that you, that you habitually take, the kind of things that you repeatedly do, the kind of goals you have, the kind of income level you're happy with, the kind of weight, the body shape that you're happy with, and much, 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 much more than that, okay? This is what forms your self-image, like a character in a movie. And ultimately, man, your self-image is your destiny. It's your destiny. Because, for example, let's say person A defines themselves as a gym person. Well, that person will go to the gym because it's congruent with their identity. They'll, na they'll naturally just keep hitting the gym and being into fitness. And that will tell us and we can predict what future is in store for that kind of person. Person B, I'm not a gym goer. I've never been in set foot in gyms. Maybe that person talks to his friends and says, oh, gyms aren't my thing. That's his identity, okay? That's his identity being communicated through his words. So he won't eat. So he will never go to the gym. He will never be healthy because his identity literally prohibits him from doing so. It's his identity that might also kill him. 20 years younger than he probably should. Your identity will either drag you to hell or it will lift you up towards heaven. If you want to change your life, you need to shift your identity. Why? Because you cannot create a new life if you're too attached to your old identity. Personal growth is synonymous, it's symbiotic with personal death. If you cannot allow previous versions of you to die, then you will not allow pre new, new versions of you to be born. But changing your identity is not easy. It's not a case of just clicking your fingers and being like, hey ho, I'm a new person now. You see when people are trying to do that, don't you? And it, it comes across as extremely fake. So how do you actually change your identity in a way that's quick, that's reliable, that's relatively easy, and that it will produce results? Again, another power word to remember is your environment. Let me give you an example. Right now, I'm on Koh Phangan Island in Thailand. This is an island full of health food shops, yoga studios, meditation centers. The cost of living is extremely low, so nobody has any financial pressure except for maybe the locals, some of them. Everyone's walking around with big smiles on their faces. I keep seeing ridiculously healthy looking people. It makes me feel a bit self-conscious sometimes, I'll be honest. But there's basically there's loads of happy, healthy, vibrant people. Not all of them, but a majority seem to be that. And with all the health food shops and all this other stuff, do you think that's a coincidence? Absolutely not. It's also a place full of lush green jungles and beautiful blue skies and gorgeous beaches and the weather's really nice. Do you really think it's a coincidence that all these happy, healthy people are in this environment? No, because the physical environment supports that kind of identity. It 
feeds it. Your identity is pretty much a co-creation, a conspiracy between your psyche and your environment. Okay, they're kind of feeding each other. Your environment either supports the person you are trying to become or it hinders it. But physical environment is not the only type of environment. Another type of environment to consider is your social environment. If you did an audit of your life, of, your, of the people in your life, do these people lift you up? Do they support the active creation of the best possible version of yourself? Or does it hinder it? Does it cripple it? Does it hold you back? Do they pull you down in some way? I want you to get really honest about this, mate. I've worked with men for years now. I've worked with well over a hundred men, that's my body count. And to tell you the truth, I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've encountered a man whose life was actively being sabotaged by, I don't know, a, a toxic mother who refuses to let go of her precious little boy even though he's like 38. I've seen men in friendship groups where their only common ground, the only common interest they have is fucking addiction to alcohol or drugs. That's the only thing keeping this social world together. Men with abusive family dynamics that don't value and don't reward connection, vulnerability and authentic expression, but act actively punish it. If you have people around you that don't support your best version, maintain a safe distance. If you have people around you that actively sabotage you, cut them the fuck loose. If you are serious about being your best version in this world. And I'm not just talking about friends. I'm talking about toxic family members as well. There are certain people, I don't care if they're your blood relatives, if they're actively sabotaging you and they are toxic, then cut them loose and don't feel guilty about it. I wish, I wish more people understood that. And I don't care if you're afraid of being lonely. Okay, loneliness, temporary loneliness is something you can handle. I promise you that. And it's preferable to be having your life sabotaged by toxic people. But there's one more environment that I want to talk to you about. And it's your environment that once, after this video, you can clean it up in three minutes after watching this video. And that is your digital environment. The information that you repeatedly consume on a daily basis shapes the kind of person that you are and the person that you are actively becoming. About a year ago, I got well into watching shitloads of Ukrainian war footage. And for some reason, man, that was, that was a dark period. What a surprise. This, and it was painting my worldview and turning me into a more sort of like negative, pessimistic person. And I noticed it happen, but somehow I just got addicted to it. When I cut all of that loose, then I noticed myself naturally become a more positive person. Less than three months ago, I had this big audit where I looked at all the people that I followed on social media and I chose to unfollow every single one of them. And then I refollowed certain people for a very specific reason. And that reason is because it adds something to my life. Since doing that, now my social media feeds are a source of inspiration. They make me feel good. It's like I'm hanging out with people who I really vibe with. People who we're growing businesses together. We're improving ourselves together in some way. So your feed. And by the way, man, your so the smartphone, social media, this shit is not going anywhere. A couple of years ago, I made videos about how you should cut it out completely. But let's be real, man. That's not happening anytime soon. This is not going anywhere. So you might as well make it work for you rather than against you. Now, one thing you could do after this video is you can actually, once you've cleared out all and unfollowed all of your people on social media, is you can, you can follow my new page, which is a new Instagram page I'm creating. Well, I have created it, it's already going. From really like the best bits and clips from this channel. So that on your feed, you're going to get these little tidbits of things to remind you, things that are going to support you in your personal growth and self-healing journey uh, on the way, mate. So click the link in the pinned comment down below to, to follow my new Instagram page. And I will see you, man, in the next video. Peace.